Family Theatre presents Victor Jory and Jimmy Durante. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network in cooperation with Family Theatre presents Lines of Probability, starring Victor Jory. And now, here is your host, Jimmy Durante. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theatre's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves Peace for our families and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Lines of Probability, starring Victor Jory as Adam. A good meal. Very good. Don't you think so, Kathy? Oh, it really was very good, Mrs. Donner. And that pie. That's really something special, isn't it? Oh, nothing. One of these days, I'm going to talk you out of the recipe. Recipe? I couldn't make it myself from a recipe. You know, a little of this, some of that. Well, then someday I'll come over and watch you. You'll be more than welcome. More coffee, Adam? Fine, fine. Kathy? Just a little, please. It was so nice of you to ask me to stay. Just a plain family meal in the kitchen. Well, I like to eat in the kitchen. Besides, you've known me too long to break out the china. Jimmy, more? No, thanks. Good. Wouldn't want to stunt your growth. I thought it was something else that was supposed to stunt your growth. <laughs> it is just a family joke. <laughs> oh, gee, it's going to be rough, isn't it? Rough? What's going to be rough? I mean... I bet you'll miss Jimmy as much as I will when he goes away to school. When he goes away to school? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you had the whole thing settled. It's settled. Well, yes, of course. Kathy, maybe I'd better see you a little later. Huh? I'll run over in a little bit. Yes, that's a good idea. There are some things at home I really should take care of. I'll see you to the door. Well, the back door's fine. I'll just run across the alley. And thanks again for the wonderful dinner, Mrs. Donner. Glad you could stay, dear. Good night, Mr. Donner. Good night. I'll see you later, Jim. Okay, Kathy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sit down. All right. This is for the last time. About this college business? No. You can forget you ever thought of the idea. Now, we'll drink our coffee and just pretend this never came up. Adam, please, can't we at least talk about it? No point in talking about something that'll never happen. I'm a man now. It's up to me to decide. Oh, so you're a man. Then why don't you act like one? It's my future. And I'm your father. And it's up to me to keep you from throwing it away. Your future? What have you accomplished? School, school, and more school. And now you want to spend the next four or five years with still more. Can you tell me what kind of a future you can expect to have when you spend all of your time preparing and none of it working? But that's why I want to. Why I have to stay in school. At work. That's where you belong. That's the only school you need now. And it's a school you can go to while you're building your future. Not just forever getting ready to build it. You mean come down to the factory with you? Hmm. Maybe in 20 or 30 years I'll be a foreman like you? You call that a future? That's enough. Go to your room. Go to my room? You're going to act like a little boy. I'll treat you like one. Leave the table and go to your room. Mom, can't you... Now, don't look to your mother for help. You do what I say. Go to your room. Yes, sir. It wouldn't cost you anything, Pa. I said go. Yes, sir. Oh, Adam, I wish you'd think this over. Just because you didn't have the opportunity. There is no thinking over to be done. Mother is going to work at the plant. A good, solid job, plenty of security. There are other things in life than just security, Adam. And besides, a lawyer... Don't want to go into it anymore. I've made up my mind. A father should know what's best for his own son. Well, you're right about that, Adam. A father should. You always have to have the last word, huh? Well... I'll tell you something, the last word in this has already been said, and I said it, not you. Now, I'm going into the living room and read my paper. 
When you finish the dishes, if you want to come in and watch a little television, all right. But if you think there's going to be any more talk about Jimmy and this college business, well, you're sadly mistaken. You're making a mistake, Adam. Uh, <laughs> women. Time was in this country when a man was master of his own house. Now, where's that paper? Oh, there it is. Now, the light. Now, now we'll see what's new in the world. <laughs> that boy wanted to waste all that time when he should be out working. Him, a lawyer. <laughs> Must have dozed off. <clears throat> yeah, Martha! Martha, the doorbell's ringing. Oh, where is that woman? All right. All right, I'm coming. Hold your horses. Yeah? Good evening, Mr. Donner. Huh? You are Mr. Adam Donner. That's right. Whatever it is you're selling, I don't need any. Oh, I, I, I'm not selling anything. I suppose you're going to tell me that that sample case you've got there isn't a sample case. As a matter of fact, it isn't. It does contain some equipment I use in my work, but it's not a sample case. Well, if you're not a salesman, then what do you want? Just a few minutes of your time. Why? I have something I'd like to show you. Then you are a salesman. Uh, what I have for you will cost you nothing. Oh. Uh -huh. That's right. Something for nothing. Oh, Mr. Donner, I'm sure you're intelligent enough to realize that no one gets anything for nothing. What you have for me, you're going to give me. Now, who's going to pay for it? It's being paid for now, in a sense. By who? Your wife and your son. Uh-huh. Well, huh? they're not paying for it, actually. They're just asking for it. For what? Guidance for you. Uh-huh. Well, I think maybe you'd better be going now. I have to get back to my... to my work. You mean what you were doing before I rang your bell? That's right. You mean sitting in the green overstuffed chair in your living room with the paper in your lap? How did you know that? May I come in? Well... It's getting cold out here. I, uh... I suppose you can come in. You, uh... You say you've come to guide me? In what? About your son. That business again. I've made up my mind. The matter is closed. Uh, you didn't state that very well. The facts are you've made up the matter and your mind is closed. Wait a minute. Are, are, are you trying to confuse uh, me? Not really, Mr. Donner. I'm trying to make things a little clearer for you. First you said my wife and my son asked you to come here. Uh, shall we sit down? If you want. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Now, I, I didn't say that your wife and son had asked me to come. I said they had asked that you be given guidance. How did they ask? They prayed for it. They prayed for it? Yes, of course. Now, 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 wait a minute. They prayed for guidance for me, and you... You're the answer to that prayer? That's right. <laughs> and you're the strangest-looking angel I've ever seen. <laughs> and how many angels have you seen? Well, I... Well... None. But you're right. I'm not anything so august as an angel. I'm only a, well, I suppose the best word would be messenger. But you said you'd come to guide me. Oh, no, 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 no. I said I'd come to give you guidance. If you choose to take it, fine. If you won't, well, that's, uh, that's up to you. But I don't intend to try to talk you into or out of anything. Of course, there are a few questions I would like to ask first. Such as? Well, such as... When did you first come to the conclusion that your son was shy some of his faculties? Shy some of his faculties? That's what I said. Well, I, I, I never came to that conclusion. He isn't. Well, if you think he's so bright, why do you treat him as if he hasn't the brains required for deciding things for himself? Look, I'm only trying to do what's best for him. Are you sure you know what's best for him? I'm his father. Oh, Bosh. Bosh? That's a terrible argument. Terrible. God's more a father to him than you are. God made your son's creation possible, but he doesn't try to force Jim to do what he doesn't want to do. I'm only trying to think what's best for Jimmy. He's my son. I've given him some of the best years of my life. He owes me some respect. Ah. I'm beginning to see why you treat your son the way you do. What do you mean? 
You've just got things backward. Uh, backward? First, being conceived and born wasn't Jim's idea. He didn't ask you to be the instrumentality of his creation. Therefore, though life is a great thing for which he should be grateful, he owes you nothing, no indebtedness. Huh? Now, second, you say you've given him the best years of your life. That's completely backward. Now, wait a minute. Those best years were the best because of him. He gave you his whole childhood. He Oh, yes, you and your wife might have been happy if, if he hadn't been born, if he hadn't lived all these years with you. But you are much happier because he came. Isn't that true? Well, I suppose so. Then you owe him something. <sighs> all I'm trying to do is protect him from the world. Protect him from the world? Here he'll have a good, quiet life, peaceful, secure. It's a nice little town. The world's not so nice, I know. And you know the world. Hmm. If a flea living on the back of a dog claimed to know the town in which the dog lives, he would be more right than you. No. But look here, Mr. Donner, we're, we're not making any progress. And as I said, I didn't come here to talk you into anything. What are you getting out of that sample case? It's not a sample case. Now look here. I think you recognize some of these things. What's that? That's a dance card. A dance card? Yes. It belonged to a girl named Martha. Your name appears in it several times. Oh, let me see it, let me see it. My Martha's dance card. Be careful, it's quite old. Not so old. Yeah, yeah I'm in there all right. And there's Charlie Botman. <laughs> I wonder whatever happened to old Charlie. Uh, we're concerned with what happened to you. You remember that dance card? Yeah. These other names in there, she didn't dance with them. No, sir. She danced all her dances with me. <laughs> Do you remember anything else about that night? That's the night I proposed. <laughs> Nearly scared me to death. Yes. And this, this. Do you recognize this? Oh, let me see it. I've seen it before. You have indeed. What is it? Looks like part of an old car. It is. It's the brake rod from your old Essex. <laughs> When you took that trip to Evergreen with Martha 20 years ago, you looked the car over first. I remember that. You didn't like the looks of this brake rod, so you took it off and replaced that, it. That's right. Yes. Now, look. You broke it with your bare hand. <laughs> it was ready to break. If you hadn't replaced it, it's very, very likely that you and your wife would have been killed. Well, how do you like that? And look here. This. That looks like... Hey, hey. That is my shotgun. You were going hunting last year during duck season. Didn't go, though. No. You changed your mind at the last minute. Well, what's that got to do with the gun? It would have killed you. This gun? It's got a hairline crack in the breech. Hmm? The gun would have exploded. That's right, that's right. I noticed that crack the year before when I put it away. How do you suppose I could have forgotten? I don't know, but you did. Hey, look. What are you showing me all this for? These three things are all parts of major decisions you've made in your life. That's right. But, uh, but what does it prove? Mr. Donner, every man has free will. He makes up his life as he lives it out of the fabric of his decisions. I think I see what you mean. If you hadn't proposed to Martha, it's probable that you would have eventually proposed to somebody else. You would be living another life, and so would she. What I'm getting at is this. Each time you make a decision, your life changes. And these things, the card, the brake rod, the gun, they represent big decisions? Exactly. Oh, you've made a lot more than these three, but I think they give you an idea of what I mean. Why are you showing me this? Because you are at a point where you are making another big decision. And it's a decision which, Mr. Donner, does not belong to you. So you say? Oh, dear, oh, dear, I see. Well... I'll have to show you. Show me what? The two probability lines. Probability lines? A decision of importance is like a fork in the road of life. Follow one branch and certain things can happen. Follow the other branch and other things. You mean like if, uh, if I hadn't proposed to Martha? Yes, that's right. There would have been no Jimmy. In fact, almost everything in your life would be different. Hmm. Show me these lines. All right. I'll just be able to give you a glimpse. Of what? The two possible futures ahead now. Uh, if you think this is going to make me change my uh, mind... Maybe you'd better take a look first. Uh, how do I do it? First, stand up. <sighs> All right, I'm up. Now, close your eyes and keep them closed till I say you can open them. Hey, hey what are you doing? Never mind, one of the tricks of the trade. <laughs> the, 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 the carpet under my feet. 
It's getting hard. Keep your eyes closed. Uh, this. You can open your eyes now. This is a park. That's right. What park? Uh, what town is this? Same town you've always lived in. The park might be called Bascom Square. Might be called? Well, it really doesn't exist yet. You must remember we're only looking into possible futures. Bascom Square? Yes, after the Bascom body factory that used to be here. The plant? It was moved. I mean, it will probably be moved if certain decisions... Uh, look here, old man. Do you mind if we use the past tense? I find all this almost as confusing as you do. They, they, they moved the plant? That's right. Went to building airplanes. This town never got itself a decent airport. They had to move the plant. Oh, nothing for you to worry about, though. It doesn't affect your pension. But what about Jim? Well, he doesn't have to worry about things like that anymore. Huh? Oh, I say. Don't you know that young woman over there? What woman? Over what? there. Her name is Donna. You should know her. Martha? No, no, not Martha. Come on. Take a look. Yes, I... I'm afraid I'm more than just a little confused. Say, I know her. She's 15 years older now, but you know her. She's... Kathy? That's right. But I'd better tell you, she won't know you. She won't? You'll be a complete stranger to her. Otherwise, it, it could make for a temporal paradox, you understand? I'm afraid I don't. But it's not important. Just remember, she won't know you. I can talk to her then? Go right ahead. Kathy. Did you say something? I, uh, uh, I was told that you, you are Mrs. Donner. That's right. I was wondering if, uh, well, if I might have a word with you. Well, that depends. I'm, I'm a friend of your husband. Oh? Well, I am, really. I've known Jimmy's, uh, James, most of his life. You're waiting here for him, perhaps? As a matter of fact, I'm waiting for my son. A son? You have children? Yes. A son and a daughter. You... You really knew Jim? Do I know Jim? Then you haven't heard. I didn't think there'd be anyone who hadn't heard by this time. Heard what? Jim's dead. <sighs> He's been dead for almost ten years. Jim... Dead. I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you. I'm... I'm sorry, Kathy. Kathy? How did he die? It was an industrial accident. You... you called me Kathy. I think we'd better be running along now. Yes, yes, if, you, if you'll excuse me. Wait! Close your eyes, Mr. Donner. Yes, yes. But just a minute. You spoke to me as if you knew me, too. Just a minute. You can open your eyes now. I'm... I'm afraid to. Oh, no, no, no. You're back in your own living room now. It's all right. Oh, it... it wasn't true. Oh, no, not at all. We were only following the most likely of the lines of probability. That is, should your son have to do what you want instead of what he wants? What you saw might very well be the outcome. It's likely that he would be killed? He would have to make a lot of decisions around heavy machinery. With his mechanical aptitude, he would probably not survive too many mistakes without being killed or at least seriously injured. Well, they take such safety measures. There are no safety measures quite good enough to protect a man who has no real interest in what he's doing. This other future. You want a glimpse of it? Please. All right. Uh, but once again, I should tell you, it may not turn out this way. But if Jim makes his decisions well, which he tends to do in matters that interest him, it could be his future. Fifteen years? No, not so far this time. Close your eyes. They're closed. Keep them closed. I will. All right. May I open them? Go ahead. Ah, but... Oh, but, but, but this is the same room. This is my living room. But six years in the future. Look around. There are a few changes. A, a new television set. New drapes. New... Hey, so many new things. This time, Mr. Donner, they will not be able to see you at all. This time, you are only an observer. Kathy, Mom, Pop, I won. I Isn't won. Isn't that Jim? 
He's I calling me. He's calling the you Money. that might be in six years. And the you that might be have gone to the drugstore for more cigars to avoid that temporal paradox I told you about. I'm trying to get the baby asleep. All right, all right. Kathy said something about a baby. I heard it just now. They've come over to visit, and they'd, they'd had to bring the baby because the you that might be wouldn't have it any other way. You're supposed to observe. Now, observe. I will, I will. What, uh, what's he want? Jim's just campaigned for the office of city attorney. He made it? Smart boy. Now look here, if you're not going to observe... I, I will, I will, I will. Now, what is it that's important enough to wake Adam? Adam! He named his baby after me. Shh, listen. What's so important? I won. I'm the new city attorney, that's all. Well, I thought that was a foregone conclusion. Honey. <laughs> Am I giving you a hard time? You'll be the death of me. You're not even surprised. Of course not. I've always known you'd win. After all, the way you pushed the airport bond issue through just in time to keep the factory in town... What citizen would be stupid enough to vote for anybody else? <laughs> You're wonderful. Pop and Mom, they'll be surprised. Where are they? Oh, they'll be surprised, will they? Your father went to the drugstore and he took your mother with him. The drugstore? To get more cigars. <laughs> to give to people in celebration of your victory. In celebration? <laughs> you give out cigars when a new baby comes. <laughs> well, I know that. And you know it. But who can tell your father anything? Well, I like that. Oh, somebody's calling to congratulate you. Want me to get it? Uh, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hi, Dave. Dave who? <laughs> yeah, looked pretty bad there for a while. Oh, thank you. First thing, I got sworn in, I guess. Well, my father's planning sort of a celebration. Wait, is that a little better, Mr. Donner? Yes, sure, uh -huh. drop over. Is that better? The more the merrier. Suppose I... Well, you suppose I might listen to some of the calls on the extension? Time to be going. Well, can't we stay for the party? You'll be at the party. Just a little longer. Close your eyes. All right. Could we... Could we look just a little further ahead? It's not really necessary, is it? Well... No. It would be a little bit difficult anyway. Nothing happens to them. I mean... Nothing like the other. Oh, it's not in the least probable. The, the difficulty is for another reason. From this point on, there are a great many decisions for Jim to make, and a great number of them offer very strong lines of probability. You mean Jim can go on from there? As far as his abilities will allow him to go. He could be governor of the state. Jim? Or a senator. In fact, there's a good chance of him being appointed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of the United States? If he wants it. Of course, he will also have the opportunity of becoming a cheap shyster lawyer or a very small cog in a very large law firm. Those lines of probability... You've done a pretty fair job of raising him. He's likely to turn out for the best. And the best is a strong man, a force for good that ought to be allowed to grow. Starting with this first big decision. Well, I'll let him make it himself. Then I'll say good night, Mr. Donner. Wait. This this whole business, I'd I'd like some explanation. Why? You won't remember any of this. I won't. There'll be no need for it. No need? But the hours minutes. Minutes. Your wife is just now finishing the dishes. In a moment, she'll walk into this room and you'll look up from the paper you hold in your hands. You will have forgotten all of this just as most people forget the mental machinery they use to come to an intelligent decision. Good night, Mr. Donner. Good night. Did you say something, Adam? Uh-huh. I thought I heard you say something. No, at least I don't think I said anything. I, uh... I've been thinking about things, Mother. I think I'll have a word with Jim. About what? About his future. About his going to college? Something along those lines. You're going to let him go? I might. Oh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle for a man to change his mind? Jim, you in here? Yes, sir. Now, tomorrow morning... I'll be ready. No, let me finish. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to take some time off from work. We're going down to the bank to cash those bonds I bought during the war. Cash the bonds? You'll need the money if you're going to college. You mean it, Pop? I mean it. I never thought... I never thought you'd do it. I never thought you'd change your mind. It's your decision. But you've got to promise me you'll be the best lawyer you know how to be. I've got a feeling you'll go far. 
I'll do my best. Fair enough. And while I'm thinking of it, don't let me forget to take my shotgun downtown. I seem to remember finding a hairline crack in the breach. I uh, want to have it checked. Right. Okay, if I go tell Kathy? About school, I mean? Good idea. Thanks. And Pop? Yeah? You're quite a guy. <laughs> uh, suddenly I'm a hero. Adam? Huh? What... What made you change your mind? Oh, I don't know. Just seems that when you're a parent and you've got a child, you lead him to what you think are the good things. Maybe you don't stop and think that what was good for you might not be good for him. Maybe it's just that you get used to holding your child by his hand and leading him around, and then suddenly you realize it's, it's finally time to let go. This is Jimmy Durante again, stepping out of character for a minute to talk to you now as host of Family Theater. We gave you a story tonight, a radio play about a family. We people of the radio and movie industries, and that includes everybody from the big shot who owns the station down to the last kid who's knocking at the door of a talent agency. We got something at stake, and that's the American family. Of course, I don't preach to people, I'm only supposed to be a comedian. Anyway, what I want to say is this. There's nothing more beautiful in this life than a happy family. I mean it. And maybe we should remember that sacrifice, patience, hardship, all these things, together with robins and sunsets, joys and laughter, make a happy family. We can't have these things unless we look back and up, up to God. That's why we say, pray. Pray to God as a family. That means getting our kids around us, in the parlor, in the kitchen. It means, just for a few minutes, lifting our hearts and minds to God. Too many families are unhappy these days. Too many families are breaking up. These families don't know that a family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Lines of Probability, starring Victor Jory. Jimmy Durante was your host. Others in our cast were Jay Novello, Margaret Brayton, Barbara Fuller, and George Peroni. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by George Wright. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessings of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present... The Passion and Death of Christ, starring Dan O'Herlihy. Robert Young will be your host. Join us, won't you? <music> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.